All right, hostas. So I know that I said in this tutorial what I was going to do is explain a little bit more about those storyboards and scenes and, you know, how to customize transitions and everything like that. But what I want to do before that is actually talk to you about something called table views, because once we understand table views, we're going to understand how to create navigation systems a whole lot better. And table views, you've seen them all before. If you go to like your settings, there are a bunch of table views in those. So right now, just think of it like a list. All those lists you see that you can click on, those are table views. And you can actually customize them to look a lot different from one another. But you see this right here, whenever you click on it, it takes you to a new scene. You can actually have table views that don't take you to new scenes, just do anything. And again, this is just a list. You can have it with just text. You can have images on it, icons, and I know that we didn't even understand how to create them yet, but whenever we do, I want to mention this thing that confuses a lot of people. Whenever you have something that looks like this with different sections or different categories, a lot of people think that you create, for example, three separate table views. This entire thing is just one table view. You can just specify that, okay, this table is going to have three different sections. So a lot of people, you know, whenever they're first starting out, they try to create a different table for each category, but that's not how you do it. And you guys are going to see why that is important later on. So let me just slide that down. And all right. So what I did in this example is I pretty much just made a blank project, nothing new, single view application. And if you hop over to your storyboard, since we're going to be learning about table views, we should probably add one right now so you guys are probably like all right there it is right there table view controller drag that uh uh check this out go ahead and type in table and you see that we have three things that pop up a table view controller a table view and a table view cell now a table view cell is just one of the individual rows so again it could just be text it could have text in a little icon like a right arrow it could have a little image but all of those our individual cells. So we don't want that because we don't even have a table yet. What we want is this right here, table view. So take this and drag it out and make sure that it doesn't cover your status bar or the battery on top. So just add it right around there, looking sweet. And again, we wanna make sure that this appears good on every device. And I'm gonna be using the iPhone 5 to test right now. And we can do this in a lot of different ways. We can add constraints like before, but the real quick and easy way is if we go to editor and then we click resolve auto layout issues, we can just use reset to suggested constraints. And then we pretty much just let Xcode guess how we want our layout right now. And we can tweak it later on. But if we run this in the simulator, then we could say, all right looking pretty good right now those default ones you gave us looks like they're fine so again right now if you hold down your mouse and scroll you can see that we can indeed scroll through this table but uh you know we have a problem like this is a pretty cool app right now we could just put it on the app store call it like scroll master 8000 but uh it would probably be a little bit more useful if we added some content to the table and also allowed some functionality so that the user could click and something actually happened. So let's go ahead and figure out how to do that right now. So the way that you add data to your table is gonna be different for every project that you make. You can do it in a couple different ways. The first thing that you can do is you can make an entirely new file, an entire new class, specifically for adding and updating those um, different table cells. But what we want to do is we just want to say, you know what, let's just use this class, the view controller right now. So first of all, I'm going to delete all that crap. I really hate these comments. Delete that and might as well just delete this whole function. We won't need it or method. All right. So hop over to your main storyboard and we want to say that for the contents of this table, look to the view controller, look to the brains of this scene right here. So how do we do that? Well, if you highlight your table view, what you can do is you can open, open up your connections inspector and that's this little symbol with the circle and the right arrow. 
and from here you're looking for the outlet data source now this data source is saying okay this is the source of my data this is all the contents of the table so right now it doesn't know where it's at is it in this file this file this file where the heck is it well since we want to use this view controller as the data source then what we can do is we can take this little button and drag it over to this yellow symbol this yellow symbol of course okay scroll down you son of a all right so highlight that again so this yellow controller it says view controller it pretty much resembles this file the brains behind this scene so now if i drag it and release it we can see in the connections inspector it says okay the data source is now in the view controller so now i'm trying to populate my table hop over to the view controller and uh where the heck's the data well that's what we have to add right now so how do we add data once it points to the right file well the first thing we have to do we have to use a class called ui table view data source that allows this class right here to act as a data source for a table so whenever we did that it gives us an error because it's saying okay you are using this protocol right here so now since you promised to act as a data source you need to implement the proper methods so what methods do we need to implement whenever we're acting as a data source well there are three really important methods the first one is how many sections are in your table so we need to make a method that says okay for this example we'll only use one but if you're making um something like this then you might use three so let's take care of that method first and the method is called number of sections in table view so just type in number hit enter and all this does is we have to return one all right so that was probably the easiest thing we'll ever do so this function again just says how many sections are in your table well just one for right now the other question we have to answer is how many rows are in your table so i'm going to be making a table do i have one two three four five six seven eight like this one do i have like 50 like this one well it really doesn't matter for this example i'll just um i'll just like have three or something because once you know how to populate one row you're gonna learn how to populate a hundred so this is actually table view and this is gonna return an int so again i'm just gonna return three for right now and this is pretty much saying that we're going to make a table view and it's going to have three rows. So let me add a comment. Return int how many rows. And for this one, I'll just say how many sections are in your table. So right now our table has one section, one chunk, and it has three rows. I'll just put like three people's names in them, whatever. Now the last thing we have to do, you probably could have figured out, is it's gonna say, okay, now I know how big to make your table. You're gonna have one section, three rows, but what are the contents of it? What do you want me to stick in those table cells? So that's what the last function is for. Um, I'll just write like, what are the contents of each cell? Now the function for this is table, view and it's going to return you uh, if i could find it ui table view cell so again these are named the same function name but this one returns a table view cell because all right don't have enough space right here actually let me just do that it might be a little bit actually you know what i'm gonna get rid of that one there we go all right looking sweet so this one says, okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build you a table. It's gonna have one section and it's going to have three rows. Now, every single time that I create a row, I'm gonna call this method right here. And what this method has to do is it's gonna say, okay, I'm gonna return to you the contents for each one. So the first time it calls it, it might return um, alternative. The second time it might return alternative and punk and the last time it might return the word classical so with those three methods it can now build a table 
So now you see that most of the errors are gone. We only have this one right here because we actually need to write some code in here. So since this indeed returns a cell, let's go ahead and just make an object for that. So var cell is equal to UI table view cell. All right, thought it would auto populate a little bit faster than that, but whatever, it's cool, it's cool. All right, so we know that eventually we need to return that cell, but right now if we just ran it, we would just be returning an empty cell with nothing in it, and that's boring. So what I wanna do is actually take that cell, and by default, every single cell in your table has a text label, kind of like um, just a basic bit of text that you can write in, and to access it, you actually just call text label, and if you throw a question mark there, it checks if it's empty or not, and the property that we wanna access on it is text, and just throw anything in there like bacon so what this is doing again you would never do this in a real application but it's saying okay we're going to get a reference to the cell that we're supposed to return we're just going to add the word bacon to it and then we're going to return it so now if i build this check out what happens it says okay i did exactly what you told me to do i created one table view it has three rows and for each row I called this method and what did you want me to do? Well, you just wanted me to add the word bacon to the cell and that's it. So we now have a table that says bacon <laughs> three times. All right, pretty stinking. I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. I have to admit, but it would probably be a little bit better if we learn how to use an actual data source, like a tuple or a database or something like that. So in the next tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys how to do that it's going to be sweet. So I'll see you guys then.